Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. As you may know, my interview with President Trump making headlines all over the world. And tonight we will show you what you did not see in the Super Bowl pregame show. So here's what happened. We interviewed the president on Friday afternoon at the White House. The interview ran about 40 minutes, 10 of which were used by Fox Sports. So that leaves us with half an hour to show you tonight and tomorrow. Big headlines out of the Super Bowl interview were Mr. Trump's comments on the Russian tyrant Putin and the Obamacare rollout. It's interesting to watch our two competing cable news stations, which hate, hate Mr. Trump to an unhealthy degree, try to analyze what the president told me. I thought Donald Trump was straightforward and honest in that interview, whether you liked his answers or not. But the Trump haters were trying desperately to find something with which to hammer the president. Also, apparently, the Putin administration in Moscow demanding that I, your humble correspondent, apologize for saying old Vlad is a killer. So I'm working on that apology, but it may take a little time. Might want to check in with me around 2023. In a conference call with reporters, Putin's press guy said this. We think that words like that coming from the Fox correspondent are unacceptable, offensive. And to be honest, we would prefer to get an apology to the president coming from such a respected company. One footnote, if you'd like to know more about the violent history of Vladimir Putin, you might check out the book I War by Bill Gertz, a Washington Times reporter. Anyway, tonight we have a number of subjects that we presented to President Trump. Here they are. Let's talk about Iran. Uh, your assessment, uh, do you think we're on a collision course, we being the United States, with that country? I think it was the worst deal I've ever seen negotiated. I think it was a deal that should have never the been negotiated. Deal Absolutely, the deal that was made by the Obama administration. Uh, I think it's a shame that we've had a deal like that and that we had to sign a deal like that and there was no reason to do it. And if you're going to do it, have a good deal. Uh, Secretary Kerry, who was negotiating it, never once left the table. It's, we have the worst of everything. We've already given them billions and billions, probably $150 billion. We gave them $1.7 billion in cash, which is unheard of. And uh, we put the money up, and we have really nothing to show for it. Possibly you tear it up? We'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to see so what happens. Possible. I can say this. They have total disregard for our country. Uh, they are the number one terrorist state. They're sending money all over the place and weapons, uh, and can't do that. Sanctions, that's how you're going to start with them. Just started. But you're going to move in a carrier, right? Well, we just started with sanctions. I never talk about military moves. I always criticize President Obama where they have an announcement that they're going into Mosul or they're going right. to some place, and they give the name, the date, the time. I don't believe in that. Uh, we will, let's see what happens, but I don't like to talk about what we do militarily. So you're not real uh, bullish on Iran at this point? No, I'm not bullish. It's like they're emboldened. Where they, they follow our planes, they circle our ships with their little boats, and they scream things at us. It's what's happened is, is not good. You would have thought that with the deal they made, which was a great deal for them and a horrible deal for us, they would have had a warmth toward our country, and it's exactly the opposite. Uh, they lost respect because they can't believe anybody could be so stupid as to make a deal like that. Let's talk about Mexico. Um, there was a report. You talked to uh, President Nieto, and you told him this was the report. I want to know if this is true or not. That if his army couldn't handle the drug cartels, that U.S. Army soldiers would. Did you say that? We have to do something about the cartels. I did talk to him about it. I want to help him with it. I think he's a very good man. We have a very good relationship, as you probably know. Uh, we're going to have a wall. We're going to have a border. We've got to stop drugs from coming into our country. And if he can't handle it, and maybe they can, and maybe they can't, or maybe he needs help, he seemed very willing to get help from us because he has got a problem, Not a problem, and it's a real problem for us. So President Nieto of Mexico was open to the possibility of U.S. forces, all right, helping him combat the drug cartels. I would rather, as a very nice man that he is and somebody I respect, I'd rather have him respond to that, but I will tell you I certainly offered him help 
on knocking out the drug cartels because we have got a problem. Don't forget those cartels are operating in our country and they're poisoning the youth of our country. And by the way, countries all over the world, just so you understand. This is a cartel all over the world, the cartels. But I certainly would help him if he needed the help. At this point, do you consider Mexico a corrupt country? Because this stuff has been going on for decades. Is Mexico corrupt? Well, it's a country that's got difficulty. It certainly, uh, it certainly has done well with us. We have a trade deficit with Mexico of $60 billion a year. That doesn't include drugs and it doesn't include the border and all of the things that are happening on the border. Uh, but it's a country that I have great respect for the people. I love the people. Uh, I really like this administration. I think he's a good man. I, we get along very well. But they have problems controlling aspects of their country. There's no question about it. And I would say the drugs and the drug cartels, number one. Have you figured out what kind of a tariff you're going to levy on Mexico to pay for the wall? Well, we might not have to do that. Uh, they want to negotiate a deal. I want to negotiate a deal. We'll see what happens. But we can always do a tariff or a tax if necessary. And we'll do that if necessary. But if we can make a deal, a reassignment of NAFTA, but I'm going to put another F in the name NAFTA because right now it's free trade and I'm going to have it fair trade also because it's not fair all right so we're losing bill we're losing 60 billion dollars a year in trade deficits with mexico can't do that you talked to putin last week you had a busy week last week. i'm pretty busy week, yeah. busy week and a half but within 24 hours of you on the phone with the russian leader the pro-russian forces step up the violence in Ukraine. Yeah. Did you take that as an insult? No, I didn't because we don't really know exactly what that is. Uh, they're pro forces. We don't know. Are they uncontrollable? Are they uncontrolled? That happens also. We're going to find out. I would be surprised, but we'll see. Now, I'd do you to... respect Putin? I do respect him. Do you? Why? Gonna... Well, I respect a lot of people, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get along with him. He's a leader of his country. Uh, I say it's better to get along with Russia than not. Will I get along with them? I have no idea. It's He's very a possible killer, I won't. Though. Putin's a killer. A lot of killers. You got a lot of killers. Why, you think our country's so innocent? You think our country's so innocent? I don't know of any government leaders that are killers in America. Well, take a look at what we've done, too. We've made a lot of mistakes. I've been against the war in Iraq from the beginning. Yeah, mistakes are different then. A lot of mistakes, okay, but a lot of people were killed. So a lot of right. killers around, believe me. You mentioned ISIS. Can we expect, we the American people, more U.S. military action against ISIS? You know, I, I hate to be evasive, but I you don't, don't have to tell like me specifically, talking about it. Just I don't in like general. talking about it. I can say this. ISIS is bad. They're evil. They cut off heads of Christians and Muslims and anybody else that gets in their way. They drown people in steel cages. This is like not since the medieval times has anything happened like this. And the previous administration allowed it to happen because we shouldn't have been in Iraq, but we shouldn't have gotten out the way we got out. Right. It created a vacuum. ISIS was formed. I always said, take the oil. If you would have taken the oil, there would be no ISIS because they use that to fuel. But if you growth. if you took the oil, the Iraqi oil, you would have to put in U.S. troops to do that, and then that would have started another round. And you would have made a lot of money with the oil, and you would have had assets, and to the victor belong the spoils, and all of that. But forget that. Okay. Let's turn to uh, domestic policy. When can Americans expect the tax cuts? This year? Yeah, we're working very much right now on the health care package, which I think will be, it's moving along very well. We're trying to get our person, Dr. Tom Price, approved. Uh, as you know, the Democrats are being, for political, purely yeah. political reasons, it's terrible. But let me get you on the record here. 2017, can Americans expect a tax cut? I think so, yes. And, and oh. I think before the end of the year, I would like to say yes. Okay. Can Americans in 2017 expect a new health care plan rolled out by the Trump administration this year. Yeah, in the process, and maybe it'll take till sometime into next year, but we are certainly going to be in the process. Very complicated. Obamacare is a disaster. You have to remember, Obamacare doesn't work. Uh, you look at Arizona, 116% increase. You look at Minnesota, all of these places, it, it's going through the roof. Yeah, it's done. It doesn't work. Well, right. wait, wait. But when if are you going to have nothing, something ready? And we're going to be putting it in fairly soon. I think that, yes, uh, I would like to say by the end of the year, 
uh, at least the rudiments, but we should have something within the year and the following year. Now, this and, is and by the way, we will have something that's good, less expensive, and really great health care. Continuing now with our lead story, an interview with President Trump at the White House last Friday. As stated, the talk is making headlines all over the world. Here's part two. Now, this is a fascinating story. I just uh, spent the week in California. As you know, they are now voting on whether they should become a sanctuary state. So the state of California, led by Governor Jerry Brown, is defying you, is absolutely defying the President of the United States. So California and the USA are on a collision course. How do you see it? Well, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, sanctuary cities, uh, as you know, I'm very much opposed to sanctuary cities. They breed crime. There's a lot of problems. Uh, right. You do it very well with Kate uh, and uh, all of the other people you talk about on the show that I watch. Uh, I will tell you that sanctuary cities are... They got a lot of problems and there's tremendous crime. A lot of people agree with me. This was a campaign issue. This isn't just brought up now. California, in many ways, is out of control, as you know. And from a uh, economic standpoint, people are leaving California, going to Texas and other places that run in a different manner. But we'll see what happens. Uh, we will certainly not stand for sanctuary, even cities, let alone states. You mentioned case law. Why do you think the Democratic Party opposes Kate's law? It seems so logical. Yeah, it's so logical. There are many things that are very logical. Uh, tax cuts are logical, but the Democrats want to raise taxes instead of lowering taxes. But you didn't answer my question. Why do the Democrats oppose, oppose at protecting Americans from violent foreign criminals? Because Why? they think that's their voter. You know what was fascinating? to watch you at the inauguration with Barack Obama. You guys seem to get along, all right? Would that be accurate? It, it's a very strange phenomenon. We get along. I don't know if he'll admit this, but he likes me. How do you know he likes I like you? him because I can feel it. You, you know, that's what I do in life. It's called, like, I understand. Now, we had a rough campaign. He was fighting better for Hillary than she did. He was vicious during the campaign toward me, and I was vicious toward him. We said horrible things about each other. And then we hop into the car, and we drive down Pennsylvania Avenue together. We don't even talk about it. Politics is amazing. What did you talk about? We talked about the country. We talked about the future of the country. I asked him about what do you think our biggest problem is, and he told me, I can't tell you, but it's a problem. It's a military problem uh, with a China. certain place. No, it's not China, no. actually. No, it's not, but it is, he did mention, because I did ask him, I said, what would you say sure. the number one, two, and three problems are? And the number one problem that he felt, I was a little bit surprised, but I fully understand but you can't tell us? It. I can't do that. I can't do that. Not for any other reason other than I don't think he'd mind if I said it. Uh, I don't want to let that particular place know that that's the way he or I feel. But uh, we had a great, it was, it was a great inauguration. Uh, I loved every minute of it, and I got along with him. In fact, people were sort of surprised. I finished. I turned around. He was smiling. I it was, was smiling. fascinating. He was saying hello. But here's what was more fascinating. Right after you guys um, embraced, shook hands, all of that, you gave a speech. But your speech excoriated him. You basically took his administration apart. And he's sitting five feet away from you. In your mind, did you say, how is he reacting to this speech? See, I'm an honest person. The country has very, very deep-seated problems. We have to do something about it. And if you noticed, when I finished my speech, I turned around, shook his hand. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And he was very gracious and smiling. I don't know if he was happy with that I speech. I don't know, but he seemed to be. But, but this isn't just a knock on him. We've been going down the wrong path for many years beyond him. What is the most surprising thing for you about this job you have. You come from the private sector, no political office. Now you're the president of the United States. What surprised you? I think the size, the magnitude of everything. So I was a very big real estate person. I'd build a building for 500 million or 900 million dollars. And here you look at 
an airplane contract where you can save six hundred million dollars on ninety plants. I saved. I, I saved more than six hundred million dollars. I got involved in negotiation on a fighter jet, the F-35. And by the way, Lockheed Martin, a great company. But they weren't bringing their price up. I got involved. I saved more than six hundred million dollars. I was very proud of that. But the magnitude of, you can do that at every level of government. My new thing is going to be pharma, because we pay too much. We're the largest drug purchaser in the world, and they don't negotiate. How many hours a day are you working? I'm working long hours, long hours, right, right. up till 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. You can, you what can time do you get up? Uh, five o'clock. All right, and you work in after you have yeah, breakfast. Yeah, I read. I read the papers. I see what's going on on television. Right. I take a look. I see the lies that you know the the lies of. Uh, that's right. another thing. I always got sort of good press. You know, I was a business guy. I got good press. I did. <laughs> yeah, good. I know. I have never. I call it you know fake news. Some of the networks and some of the papers. It's so dis the level of dishonesty where they'll take a story that should be a good. I know good from bad. Sure. They'll take something that should be a good story. In fact, sometimes I say, "Oh, this is going to be nice to read." I'll say, "Whoa!" And they will purposely totally change it away. It's fake news. Why are they doing that? Well, because I'm on the other side of the equation. I don't think they've ever. They did it to Reagan, but not as much. Why this, though? I don't understand. I, I don't. I, I just think that it's just the other side of the coin. It's a uh, you know, they call themselves progressive, which is a beautiful word, but it, it's not true. Do you think when you they look don't at like what happens, you? I, I don't know. I think they don't like my, my, I don't think they like anybody on our side. I know you a long time, that, and I know that, you know, when people attack you personally, that bothers you. So they're saying that you're anti-Muslim. They're saying that you're anti-black. They're saying that you're anti-poor. Do you respond because you do come back? I always respond. I mean, but it, does it hurt well, your a, feelings that they are making you into a hater? No, because they always do it. The first thing they do with the Republicans or conservatives is the racist card. They pull out the racist card. They always do that, not just me. I mean, they do it with everybody. And I see that, and once you know that, you feel a lot better about it. Is there any validity to the criticism of you? that you say things you can't back up factually and as the president you could do that as a candidate or a businessman but if you say for example that there are three million illegal aliens who voted uh, and then you don't have the data to back it up some people are going to say that's irresponsible for a president to say that. Is there any validity well, to many that? many people have come out and said I'm right. You know I that. I know, but you've got to have data to back that up. Let me just, just, tell, you, let me just tell you. And it doesn't have to do with the vote, although that's a, the end result. It has to do with the registration. And when you look at the registration and you see dead people that have voted, that are on, many, many dead people are on that have voted. When you see people that are registered in two states that voted in two states, when you see other things, when you see illegals, people that are not citizens and they're on the registration rolls, see what they do is they load up the registration rolls. There's a lot of bad things happening. Look, Bill, we can be babies, but you take a look at the registration. You have illegals, you have dead people, you have this. It's really a bad situation. It's really bad. And so you think you're going to be proven correct in that statement? Well, I think I already have. A lot of people have come out and said that I am yeah, correct. Yeah, but the data has to show that three million illegals Look, voted. We have a lot of different... Uh, you go to the voting booths and you see what's going on. But forget that. Forget all of that. Just take a look at the registration and we're going to do it. And I'm going to set up a commission to be headed by Vice President Mike Pence and we're going to look at it very, very carefully. Well, that's good. Let's yeah. get to the bottom of good. this. Do you ever think you're going to convince the media, the American media, to give... And I know that you don't feel you're getting a fair shot, okay? So well, that's you, your... you don't either. In, in many cases... You because I watch and you in say... In many cases, I've never seen you're, not, you're so not getting a fair shot because, as you said, ideology drives the, the news coverage, and it shouldn't. News coverage should be news coverage, not ideological. What I do, I'm an analyst. I can do whatever I want. And I've criticized you, and you know it, and you come right back at me, and that's, that's good. That's a good thing. But there are entities in this country that 
despise you and your administration. Can you, do you think you can ever convince them to take it down a bit? Yes, I do. I think so. I think success will do that. I think jobs will do that. I think companies coming back into our country will do that. Yeah, I think I can. Uh, not all the way. I'll never get it all the way back. Hey, look, I was named, it used to be man of the year. Now it's person of the year by Time Magazine. But even on the cover, when they named, they talked about divided, divided nation. I don't think it's fair. Maybe other people do think it's fair. But I think I can bring it back. Yeah, I think success, jobs, lots of other things can bring it back. All right, last question. You get four hours of sleep or some crazy thing like that. When your uh, head hits the pillow, do you ever say to yourself, I can't believe I'm here. I cannot believe that I am the President of the United States. Um, when I wasn't a politician, I didn't start out this way. I, I, that wasn't my life goal. Do you, does that ever come into your mind? Well, I, I must tell you, uh, the other day I walked into the main entrance of the White House. And I said to myself, this is sort of amazing. Then I walked into the Oval Office, which, and I've had the head of Ford and General Motors and all of these people now as they come to see me because I want to hear from them. And they walk into the Oval Office and they have beautiful offices and they, you know, they feel the same way or you walk into Air Force One, it's like a surreal experience in a certain way, but you have to get over it because there's so much work to be done, whether it's jobs or other nations that truly hate us, truly, truly hate us and are looking to do damage. You have to get over it. Mr. President, thanks very much for taking the time. Much.